It's a story we've been telling you about throughout the day today. A KCCI investigation reveals millions of taxpayer dollars misspent, some of it at adult-oriented establishments. Our Ryan Smith poured through dozens of pages of data to find out just how much of your money has been fraudulently spent. He has our special report, new at 10. Taxpayer dollars entangled in spending at liquor stores, casinos, even strip clubs. There is a lot of fraud. KCCI has uncovered a state government program that fails to track where your hard-earned money is spent. It is theft of taxpayer money. Wendy Dishman is chief investigator for Iowa's Department of Inspections and Appeals. DIA staff tracks alleged fraud in the state's public assistance program. People aren't aware of where their tax money goes. Iowa's Family Investment Program distributes, on average, 1,500 bucks a year to low-income families. In 2013, it served about 14,000 monthly recipients. Documents obtained by KCCI detail millions of government dollars spent in prohibited places. With an annual budget just shy of 60 million, in 2013, DIA tracked down and recovered nearly $1 million fraudulently spent within the program. The report also revealed more than 5.7 million of your tax dollars misspent within the food assistance program. The people you represent, how are they going to respond to seeing these numbers? Well, I think it makes them furious that, that uh, uh, the system is being abused that way. The feds recently ordered Iowa's Department of Human Services to better regulate assistance money and prevent its use at adult-oriented locations. But even today, benefit cards like this one can be used at ATMs located inside strip clubs or swap for cash to spend on a bottle of liquor. DHS says it has a new strategy to combat welfare fraud. Officials sent this letter to recipients in the mail, informing them of prohibited locations. We need to step up. Uh, there's no question about it. State Representative Ralph Watts says a letter campaign won't get the job done. Investigators agree. They read these rules and regulations when they sign up for assistance. So for those that are intent on frauding, they don't feel that the rules and regulations apply to them. DHS stands by its policy stating it meets federal requirements, even though the department still has no plans to monitor where welfare dollars are spent. The balance on that is what do we spend of taxpayer funds to monitor use of those cards in those locations versus the fact that people can take that card and go to any ATM and get that cash benefit which there are no provisions to follow that cash. DHS spokeswoman Amy McCoy says fraudulent spending is only a small percentage of the overall taxpayer funded pot. I work full time and still don't make enough to feed her and take care of all the bills and stuff. Tanya Momani depends on government programs to help care for her 10 year old daughter. But this local mother tells me something more should be done to cut off people who cheat the system. I hate that. that. That's terrible. And if you're gambling and if you're going to a liquor store, how is that helping your child? Again, DHS reports the amount of fraud tracked in its government programs is less than 1%, but as our reporter Kevin and Stacy, that can really add up. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in some mm -hmm. cases. Well, what, if anything, can be done mm -hmm. to prevent this fraudulent spending? Well, Stacy, as mentioned, DHS isn't monitoring that money, but simply sending out this letter to recipients warning them that they will lose benefits if caught and have to repay that money. Other states have really ramped up their efforts to combat fraud. For example, I spoke with state officials in Washington this week, and they have altered all ATM machines in all 18 or older establishments, so they don't accept any welfare-related cards at mm. any of those locations. So it can be done. It can be done. Ryan, thank you very much.